Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum my dear students. So today we are going to start uh, the next chapter, uh, next unit that is unit number 11 and the title of the unit that is homeostasis. Homeostasis. So this is the title of the unit. Uh, first of all, uh, we will define uh, a little bit discussion about the title of the unit. That what does it mean? So homeostasis uh, is actually it is the maintenance of the internal environment. Maintenance of the internal. environment of an organism constant or nearly constant with respect to the surrounding environment with respect to surrounding environment this is called this is called homeostasis. So the surrounding environment with respect to environment, there are uh, three main components of the environment. One is called solvent. The second one that is called solute. The main solvent in the environment, you know that is water solute and the third one that is temperature so homostasis what homostasis mean let's suppose that this is the internal environment internal environment of the body of the living organism internal environment so this is the internal environment this rectangle or square it show the internal environment of an organism or a cell or a tissue or a body and that is the surrounding so that is the surrounding so then every organism either it is plants or it is animals or it is unicellular or multicellular complex multicellular but if this is a living organism so it will keep constant or nearly constant this internal environment uh, with respect to the surrounding so if uh, there is increase or decrease let's say the temperature of the outer environment let's suppose that is 42 centigrade and if this is a human, so it will maintain its temperature uh, in 37 centigrade. If the temperature fall, the surrounding temperature fall to 10 centigrade, then the same temperature of the internal body will be maintained. So this is called homostasis, keeping the internal environment of an organism constant or nearly to constant with respect to the surrounding if there is change fluctuation in the surrounding environment but the internal environment of the organism that will be constant and there will be a mechanism so there are three components of the environment uh, water that is solvent solute and temperature now we are going uh, to uh, 
define some terms related with the homeostasis. The first one is osmoregulation. This is the homeostasis of the solute and solvent. So how we will define the osmoregulation keeping the internal solute and solvent solvent mean water concentration constant so this is called osmoregulation this is one aspect of the homeostasis or uh, we can also define the keeping the internal osmotic pressure constant so this is in other words because osmosis uh, because of water and solute especially of water and osmotic pressure will be developed so their pressure will be constant so uh, this is also called keeping the internal osmotic pressure constant so that is also called osmoregulation another term uh, with the help of an example let's say they inside the body the solute and solvent concentration you have studied in the chemistry the uh, percentage solution concentration so inside the body or the cell or organism let's suppose the concentration that is 60% and the environment that is 80% concentration. So in all situation, in all condition, this internal concentration of the solute and solvent that will be maintained. Either it is a surrounding environment uh, concentration of the solute and solvent, either if it increase or decrease irrespective of the surrounding environment the internal environment concentration will be remain same a60 if this concentration become uh, to 40 so it will be remain same a60 and there will be a mechanism with that organism that how it maintain the osmo regulation now come toward the next term uh, the next term there is thermoregulation thermoregulation is the name indicate thermi heat temperature so maintenance the internal temperature of the body of living body constant or nearly to be constant this is called thermoregulation and for example the human body temperature that is 37 centigrade so this is internal temperature of the body and it will be remained constant in all condition in all kind of environment if there is a fluctuation in the surrounding environment for example now it is hot so outside temperature there is 42 centigrade but the body will maintain the exact temperature through some mechanism and later on we will discuss that it will be 37 centigrade in the winter as the temperature fall up to 10 centigrade but in that case the temperature of the body that will be remain same so this is called 
thermoregulation. Though the next terms that we are going to uh, study that is excretion. Excretion. What does it mean or how we will define the excretion? Excretion is the removal removal of the metabolic waste in excess of materials that is not further stored inside the body. Now let's explain this definition. Like what does it mean? The removal of metabolic waste. What are metabolism? You know that a lot of chemical reactions take place inside the body. And during these reactions, some waste are produced and they are toxic to the body. For example, uh, maybe urea, uric acid. Uh, maybe carbon dioxide, it is a gas. Heat. So, urea, uric acid, carbon dioxide, they result in from the metabolic waste. So, the removal of these metabolic waste, that is called excretion. Now, the second uh, point of this definition excess of material like water water is not poison but if it, it is an excess so it will be removed from the body so this is also excretion salts salts are not poison or toxic or not waste but if it is in an excess and further the body cannot store that's enough for the body, then at uh, excess of the salts they are here. So this is called excretion. This excretion help the thermoregulation as well as the osmoregulation. Like if uh, the water maintenance or uh, salute and solvent concentration, it is maintained and there is excess of water. So it will disturb the osmoregulation. Uh, it will disturb the salute and solvent concentration of the body. So through excretion, excess of water, it will be removed. And if the salt concentration increase, so it means uh, the salute concentration will be increased. And the osmoregulation will be disturbed. So excretion remove the excess of salt. Thermoregulation, if the body produce overheat, so the temperature of the body, that will be rise up. So this excretion, the excess of heat that is removed and the temperature is maintained. So this excretion that help thermoregulation as well as the osmoregulation. And in this chapter, we will discuss all these things in the plants as well as in animal and especially in the human. Now we will discuss how the plant regulate their salute and solvent concentration are maintained the osmotic pressure of internal body constant. So osmoregulation in plants. Regulation in plants. On the basis of habitat, the living place, habitat means the living place of an organism, it is called habitat. So on the basis of habitat, the plants are divided into four groups and the first one that is uh, hydrophytes the second one that is xerophytes the 
The third one date is uh, halophytes. And the fourth one date is mesophytes. I have changed a little bit the sequence of these categories <coughs> as mentioned in the book. So uh, on the basis of habitat there are four groups of the plant and we will discuss that how this plant maintain the osmoregulation. First of all the hydrophytes. <coughs> Hydro mean water. And pipes mean plant. So these are the plants which live inside the water, wholly or partially. So the plants, what are the hydrophytes? These are the plants. which live inside inside the water wholly or partially for example uh, water lake so this is the diagram of water lily you can see here. Uh, hydrella. Cora. Cora, uh, that, that was hydrella. Cora, this is a uh, algae, green algae. So these are the uh, hydrophytes example is given uh, in your book. Now, uh, With respect to osmoregulation, what kind of problem uh, what kind of problem these plants face? So they are living in water, in fresh water. So let's say they, this is the internal environment. This is the internal environment. Of this plant and this is the surrounding environment so inside so in the surrounding there will be water so more water will be enter inside their body so they will be face the problem of hydration and their osmotic pressure will be increased their water concentration will be increased and it will be disturbed but they will maintain the internal environment constant with respect to water either they have the mechanism excess of water will be removed or less amount of water will be absorbed so they face the problem of the hydration hydration mean uh, water continuously enter in their body so amount of water will be increased but they have solved this problem they have adopted some of the character to solve this problem now what are those adaptation of the hydropyrpides plants so adaptation adaptation of the hydropyrpides plants to maintain osmoregulation hydrophytes for uh, osmoregulation so the first uh, adaptation that is poorly developed roots poorly developed roots uh, 
and their roots are poorly developed. Uh, so the entire plant uh, absorbs water, so there is uh, no need for the root. If the root were there, so further they will be absorbed the water and already they are in the water entirely or partly submerged in water. So the root of these plants, they are poorly developed and it to prevent uh, the excess absorption, of the absorption of the water. So the first adaptation, they, their root are poorly developed. Uh, the second one, there is delicate stem. Their stem is usually uh, green and it is very uh, delicate. It is delicate stem. The next character, there is a large number of uh, leaves. Large large number of leaves or large size of leaves. So if the leaves are more so there will be more evaporation. So the excess of water will be reduced. For example, this is one leaf. On other side, there are two leaves. So there is more surface area of these two leaves as compared to this one leaf. So there will be more evaporation, transpiration from the surface. So excess of water will be removed. And another date, large size of leaf. The leaf size date is large. This is one leaf, this is another leaf. So usually in these plants, the size of the leaves, they are more because the surface area increase. And if the surface area is increased, so there will be more transpiration. So the excess of water that will be removed. The next adaptation of uh, hydrophytes date is absence absence of the cuticle. Cuticle actually this is a waxy layer about about the leaf. And it prevent the transpiration. It decrease the evaporation of water from the plant. So in this in this plant, the cuticle is absent. If the cuticle is absent, so there will be more transpiration of water. So the excess of water that will be transpired. So the this was the next uh, uh, adaptation, and the next one, the last one, that is. Uh, uh, poor xylem and phloem. Actually, these are conducting tissue, xylem and phloem. So they are poorly developed because if this is the, for example, this is the plant. So this is the xylem. So the xylem conduct water from the soil to the leaves or upper parts. So it is the xylem, this is the xylem, so the xylem are poorly developed. So these plants are unable to conduct more water because already it absorbed water through their surface and uh, already they are hydrated. So because of this uh, poorly xylem, these plants are unable to absorb or conduct more water to the upper parts. So these were the adaptation of the uh, hydrophytes. Uh, this lecture is continued to be continued and the next lecture we will discuss the remaining three uh, plants, xerophytes, halophytes and mesophytes. Thank you very much.